What's up, everyone? Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Blasphemy Bite. My name is Atul John, and I'm an engineer based in the Bay Area. In this channel, we go over some common interview problems so that I can help you crack some of the top engineering companies. So I basically hope that through these videos, you create a spark within you so that you're able to go and crack them on your own. Uh, at this moment, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that my videos keep popping up in your feed. I uh, just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of my new subscribers who always keep me moving forward. So before we get started, uh, let's actually head over to levels.fii. And this page is a page which gives you like all of the salaries of the people or the engineers working at these top engineering companies. And so in this example, I've just taken three companies that I really like. One is Adobe, Microsoft, and Google. And let's start off with Adobe. So if you click on Software Engineer 1, it gives you the salary or the average salaries reported for an engineer who works at Adobe. So you can see here that the total compensation is 134,667. Now, if you move on to Microsoft, you can see the salary is about 155,000, 56,000. Moving on to Google, this is what I love the best. If you're a new grad and you're lucky enough or and hardworking enough to get a role at Google, your starting salary is about $180,000. Now, something funny if you do, I think if you make it just San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose, your take home or your total compensation goes up to $191,000, close to $192,000. And that's the power of working in a top tech company. And this is one of the reasons why you should up level. I mean, it's always great to work at the top company because you get to work on amazing products, you get to work with amazing people, you get to solve really big and interesting problems. So without talking too much about all that money that these engineers are making, let's jump into our, uh, our question. Now this question, the explanation on lead code was so good that uh, I was able to code it up in the first time itself. And that, that I, once you're done watching this video, I would definitely recommend you guys go and check out the explanations. So let's look at the question. What's the question? Question is, the lowest common ancestor of a binary tree. The question is, given a binary tree, find the lowest common ancestor of two given nodes in a tree. Now, the definition of an, of an LCA is explained on uh, Wikipedia. So let's look at an example so that you can understand it better. In this example over here, if you're asked what is the least common ancestor between, uh, let's say, 5 and five and one. Between five and one, what would be the answer? The answer would be three. Now if you take another example, let's say you take five and eight, the answer is still three because the least common ancestor, like if you keep going back, 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 the, it's somewhat like the lowest common multiple, you would say, right? Who is the common ancestor here, right? If you keep going down, up, who do you see first? And that's basically what we are trying to find here. Uh, let's actually do another example so that I can explain this. It'll be easier for me to explain later. Uh, let's say you want to find the least common ancestor between five and four. Well, in this case, the answer is five because Five, by definition, is an ancestor of itself. So that's how we define an ancestor. It is actually, uh, every node is an ancestor of itself and a descendant of itself. So that's by definition of an ancestor and a descendant. And four, if you go back up, you can see that it is an ancestor. 
So 5 has, has an ancestor 5 and 4 has an ancestor 5. So because they're both same, you're going to return this as the answer. Sounds good? Now, all of this sounds good, like least common ancestors, fancy name. But what do you actually use this for? Where do we use LCA? And this is these are some things that I found from the internet. And you, could, you, you can uh, check these out yourself as well. So in compilers, the LCA of two basic blocks is a place where I can put a computation so it, it is available to both. Now this is an easy example to think of, right? So let's say that uh, you have some uh, code that executing, and there are multiple paths, okay? And then you have some computation that's being used by both by both this guy and this guy. So where can you place this? Where can you place that computation such that both functions have equal access or can access the same information? So in this example, it would be here, right? So if you place the, let's say some variable, if, if you place the same that's variable here, this node can accept, can use it, and this node can accept, uh, can use it. So that's actually one, um, one real world application of, of an LCA. Now what's another uh, application? Now this is an interesting one. Let's say that you are required to find the distance between two nodes, that, uh, the lowest distance between two nodes. So what can we do? You can go find the distance um, till the common uh, till uh, v and the distance till w and then you can subtract and you can find also the least common ancestor and then subtract that from both of the both of the distances now let's look at an example let's do a simple example here in this example let's say this is v and this is w so from root to v, you will have one distance. Let's say that is v bar. And then from root to w, there's a distance, which is w bar. And then if you subtract this part here twice, plus 2 of LCA, actually that should be minus. If you subtract that, you will actually get the distance from this node to this node. So that's another uh, application of an LCA algorithm. There are other complicated uh, algorithms as well that use uh, LCA. You can just read up about those. Now, let's take an example. So I will take three examples to make it easier for you to understand uh, what we need in order to be able to do this problem. So the things that we have to do while we're doing this is at every instant when we have a node we have to check some things so if our current node matches one of the nodes that we want to check then you can set a variable or boolean called mid to true so just just take this with a pinch of salt you will understand why this is so important and then once you have that information you go dfs to the left you go dfs to the right and then you check if they are true and you keep that values in another boolean called left another boolean called right so the result of the dfs going down your left tree should give you should be stored in left and the dfs value going to the right subtree will be stored in right and now you've got these three values right you've got left you got right and you've got some value mid right and based on these three values you're going to take a decision okay is, it, is this node, does this node qualify to become an LCA? It's all based on these three factors. And now, it'll be easier to understand this once we start doing some problems, okay? So the first example that we're going to take is an example where you have a node which is not the same node as the nodes that you're searching for, but it is the LCA. So it has to go to the left and it has to go to the right. And an example of that is, let's take a value 
let's take these two values let's take eight, five and eight by looking at this you can say that the least common ancestor is three but how, how do we get to that information so we're going to do regular dfs so you start here um, you go down here go down here so when you get here do, did you find anything no and then you come back so when you come back you realize that hey wait a second five is actually one of the values that i'm looking for so what do you do at that point at that point you're going to do mid is true does that make sense and then what do you do you keep going down and then go to the right right subtree then you go here there's nothing there you don't find anything you come back up you go here there's nothing there come back up come back up and then when you go here what are you going to return so you know that left is false right there's there's nothing here okay there's no there's nobody there what about here is somebody here uh, in the right side no there's nobody there in the right side but i myself i'm actually one of the nodes that you're looking for so because my mid is true i'm going to return that value so look at this like this kind of gives you a hint so when you're returning you should return the value of left right and true right so if either one of these is true you will return a true value right so just remember that as we as you go through and then once you understand you, you'll be able to see that uh, it maps directly into the code now moving forward you go right you go left you don't see anything keep going left don't see anything come back up you come back up so here you get false left is false mid is also false because this is nobody right then you come back here and then you see that hey this is one of the nodes i was looking for so what are you going to do you're going to set um, in this case you will return mid as true okay and then in this case what happens your right is going to be true does that make sense and then when you return back what is going to happen for three the left is true okay and the right is true because this was the left subtree when you return here you'll return true here okay and then here you'll return true as well so when you look and then you're going to take a decision okay you've reached a, a node where something is working out for me <laughs> i actually got a left and a right how do, how do i use this so one of the one of the qualifying criteria for uh, left and right to work out is that left and right should necessarily be true so in this case So you see that left and right are both uh, true. So because of that, you can say that, hey, this node definitely qualifies to be an LCA. Now let's, uh, let's take another example. Let's see how far back we can go. I hope everyone is staying safe. I should have probably created more of these, more examples. Should have just drawn this earlier. Well, this is how we learn right okay now the next example that we're going to do is the example where i am my own ancestor and my descendant and the other guy actually lies in either one of my left or right subtrees let's look at that example okay i'm going to take another example of one and nine so i'm not going to bother going through the left subtree because obviously there's nobody there right there's nobody of there's nobody of interest over there going into the right subtree we are a little bit interested right so we go here and then we see that one so here we make mid as true okay and then we go left left and then we got true here 
so by the time we recurse back up you get left is true and your mid is true oh wow we have we have another condition another beautiful condition of left and mid being true so in that case if that condition is also true you're going to say hey this node qualifies to be an lca so that's basically it of how you would uh, find out um, whether uh, uh, how, how to find the uh, least common ancestor now similar to this left and mid there's going to be right and mid an example for that would be uh, we don't need to go into it but let me just show you the example an example for that would be five and four we can see that in this case mid and right that would be the condition that is getting satisfied now let's uh, quickly look at the code So in this in this code, it's quite simple. We are we're doing everything that you asked me to do. So if my node is so this part over here, if the node is P or Q, then what do we do? We say that hey, my mid is true, right? So that's that's one way of uh, doing it right and then you're look, going to look at all of the uh, we're going to go recurse down the left and the right subtrees that's what's that is what's happening here okay and you store that it's a boolean we're going to store that and then if these are true if either one of these conditions is true so if either right and left if either right and mid if either left and mid then what do you do you're going to say hey okay 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 lca is the current node and then you're going to do something weird over here you're going to return true if either one of this is true right so that's basically it the code uh, you are going to keep updating your lca if you ever come across this and then once a helper function is done the dirty work you're going to return lca so that basically is it i hope you guys had uh, had fun learning and if you've got any questions please make sure to ask in the comment section. I'll be putting up the code in uh, GitHub and make sure you subscribe, and make sure you hit the bell icon. Thank you. Have a nice day.